We here at the Dad Labs believe it's important to raise children that are sensitive, expressive, and empathetic. What better way to do that, to instill those values, than with art? It's important to nurture your child's artistic impulses from the very beginning, because after all, they'll produce beautiful works of art like this. Art like this will bring pleasure to a family for years and years to come. The only problem is that this shit stacks up. Kindergartners, preschoolers, daycare kids, they bring this stuff home by the ream. It's amazing how much they can actually produce. And if you're like most families, you've got limited gallery space. So how do you decide what makes it into Les Musées Frigidaire and what goes into Les Garbage? In order to help us decide this important decision, we brought in an expert. We brought Professor Daddy Wallace, noted art historian and critic, into the studio to take a look at some art with us. Professor Daddy Wallace. Daddy Clay, thank you for having me. Thank you very much for, for taking time off from your appointment at the, uh, at the Academy saint Estef. Uh, what we'd like you to do is, is to take a look at a couple of pieces of art here. Uh, let us know what you think and, and decide for us. Is this, is this something we keep or something we pitch? Let's take a look. Well, Daddy Clay, this first piece is a lovely piece. It looks like something that uh, follows the Fauvist tradition by Henri Matisse. You've got blues and greens, strong, warm, complimentary, warm, cool, complimentary colors a friendly shape, uh, and then a girl with a suitcase next to it? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's obviously a happy girl. That's, that's, uh, Is that your daughter leaving home? No, no, that's her going home, because she's happy oh. going home. Well, anyway, I would definitely keep this one. Good, okay, one for the fridge. How about this piece? Well, I like all the colors. Um, it's very colorful, but, but maybe um, too many colors. There's orange, purple green and blue and then some strange landscape additions with uh, some sort of ochre tree and a yellow sun. I, I don't see how all these things really fit together and hang together very well, Clay. What about you? Um, you know, I, I, we want your professional opinion, you know, and, and that's good. You just, you know, there's no, no, no need to be a dick, okay? Mm -hmm. You don't, you just take a look at the art and... Oh, I'd definitely throw it away. Okay, one for the garbage. Okay, next piece. You know, Daddy Clay, here's another one I'm not sure what to do with. I mean, on the one hand, there's the clear reference to, or it makes us think about Andy Warhol's repetition of images. It was Marilyn Monroe or Chairman Mao or Elvis, where uh, the images themselves and their repetition and the colors that surrounded them made us think about the relationship between high art and popular culture. But here, I'm not even quite sure what's depicted. Um, and then the lines aren't straight. Uh, what, what's the big blue thing? Well, I mean, I'm not, you know, an art historian or anything, but it's like a cloud, and it's like, you know, mm -hmm. the Incredible Hulk with three legs, mm -hmm. and it clearly the work uh, by, a, by a really smart uh, mm -hmm. a kid, don't, wouldn't, wouldn't you say? No, I'd throw it away. Mm -hmm. Okay. One for the garbage. Okay, here we go. Well, this one is clearly done by younger artists. This child has used a variety of colors. There's a, the landscape elements make sense. Um, there's happy expression. Um, there's good control of shapes. And the young child has filled the entire page. Uh, I, I just think there's lots to recommend this one. So you want to keep this one? Yeah. Because this one's by your kid, isn't it? <laughs> well, still though, it's excellent. Okay, this one goes onto the Frigidaire. So how about, how about this one? Well, you know, really in the history of Western art, from the Renaissance forward, the trend had, had been to try to pick a unified perspective so that when you look at a scene, you're seeing all of it from one perspective, a single, stable viewer. Um, and this piece is really interesting and fascinating because there are multiple perspectives. You look at the trees from here, you look down on the aquatic animals. Or, what are those? I, I'm not... Those are, those are platypuses or... Uh, not a pie, mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. there's an, and there's a shark. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And then the green door, I mean, we haven't even talked about the color here, which is superb. The green door placed in the middle of the pond, I'm not sure what its function is, but it's it's certainly thought-provoking. It's sort of like, uh, either, either Dali or, or this kid's on meth. I don't know which. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Which yeah. one? Is this a bright Keep, yeah. a keeper or, or? Definitely a keeper, Keeper, I think. okay, this one's going right up on the fridge. Okay, well, let's take a look at this one. Well, one of the things that's happened in 20th century art is that artists have decided that there could be things that are put on a canvas and that those things could be considered art themselves. 
the synthetic cubists in particular picked up on these things. They called, you know, they called them collages. And then you have other sorts of found objects that were put on art. And this is clearly falls within that tradition. Um, however, there are some real interesting choices of shapes and colors here. And I don't quite know, uh, there's that wonderful arms that are sticking on the bottom, but I'm not sure how they're supposed to be related to the bright purple and yellow flowers above them. Um, what do you think about all that? It's a nice thing of a yeah. girl bring uh, Picasso, right? You know, Picasso. Yeah, that's true. The he was a, he was yeah. he was kind of an asshole too, wasn't he? he was well, no, he was a big br asshole. brilliant genius, like brilliant most genius. Art critics, right? So uh, I'd throw big. this one away. Yes, of course mm -hmm. you would. Okay, so asshole says to throw this one away. <laughs> okay. I think I know where we're going with this one. Daddy will also take a, take a look. <laughs> now, Clay, this piece is truly remarkable. This is clearly not the work of a child artist. This really reminds me of the work of Jackson Pollock, the abstract expressionist, the action painter. You, this is like special ed. No, this is an excellent piece. It's, it's like, a union of color and like shapes. Art and therapy is what that is. You can literally see that the way that the process of making bit. the art is reflected in the in the piece of Dude, art itself. Painted by like one of those elephants that they put the brush in their nose. This is an immortal classic, Daddy Clay. Not in my house. What do you think of this? Well, this is really interesting. In the in the late twentieth century, artists. Uh, uh, part of a conceptual art school, and then there was a period known as op art or optical art, where they sought through all sorts of colors and patterns, really in combination, to create things that would just really be interesting to look at. And this falls, seems to fall really clearly within that tradition. And, and, and it's not easy for anybody to cover that large a sheet, uh, a, a field with such a consistent pattern and such a mu multiplicity of colors that seem to go along with each other. I, I really like this piece. Yeah, it, it, it kind of makes my tummy ticklish. Hmm. A little dizzy. <laughs> so this one's a keeper. Yeah, I'd definitely put this one on the fridge. Okay, how about this? Well, Daddy Clay, on the one hand, this seems to be sort of a straightforward children's puppet, but really there are some things about it that are, I would describe as deeply disturbing. The combination of the portrait of Ulysses Grant with the, uh, uh, you know, sort of the purple, gown underneath and then the coins, the fake coins and the belt. Um, it looks almost like a work of art done by the Dada artists and their purpose in making art was to destroy the tradition of art itself. So uh, I'm really troubled by this. Do you see any of this? Uh, yeah, it's like it's a, it's a talking puppet and it's saying to me, Professor Daddy Wallace has got a big fat ass. Big puffy bud. Well, be that as it may, I definitely wouldn't put it on my fridge in the, in the museum. Okay, another one for the round file. We got plenty of room on the fridge here. If you want to pick any of the kids' stuff that you like, you just go ahead and let me know. What do you think? Well, this one's its really interesting. On the one hand, it seems to be uh, an innocent, I am going to trick or treat, it says at the bottom of the picture, and so you expect something to be happy, community oriented. Then on the other hand, you get this deeply disturbing picture on the top with this very strongly, prominently placed phallic symbol surrounding a yellow sun, and then little children with sort of, looks like they're, they've been electrified and their hair is coming up. It, it's almost German expressionist. It's almost. 19 teens, it's almost Emil Nolde in that crowd, and I, I just wonder why a young child is doing art like this. Phallic. Nice. Keep or not keep? Um, I, it's disturbing, but I definitely think I would keep it. All right, we keep the disturbing penis picture for the refrigerator. You're weird. So, how do you manage the art inventory on your Frigidaire? If you've got a tip or trick, send us a comment, let us know how to do it. Also, write in and leave a comment if you've ever had the experience of having your child look in the garbage and discover their own art that you've thrown away and they melt down and, and you feel terribly for having destroyed their sense of self-worth. Because that's, that's never happened to me. So, send us a comment. Professor Daddy Wallace, thank you so much for joining us in the studio today. Glad to be here. Really appreciated that that wonderful perspective on the, on the children's art, kind of. That's all for us here at the Dad Labs.